Is it not letting me get in? Sorry, guys, I got some technical difficulties here. Um, give me a second and I'll upload back upload here in a sec. All right. This is showing up. I don't know why it's doing stuff. Enter studio. Enter studio. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, it's been a while since I've done this on my own. Usually I have my uh, my producer with me, uh, but not today, rolling solo. So a couple of things I wanted to get to, you know, with the wild card weekend kicking in, um, not the wild card, I should say the divisional weekend kicking in. And I want to give you guys, you know, my thoughts and some, um, you know, some what I believe is actually going on, um, you know, with the Philadelphia Eagles. So I think first things first, it's a big weekend as far as um, the NFC AFC division around playoffs are concerned. Um, so let's handicap those games first. First of all, we got the Texans traveling to the Ravens today. And um, I'm seeing in some of the comments, uh, somebody is talking about a Ravens, another Ravens collapse. Um, I don't see it that way. I think that the Baltimore Ravens, in my opinion, might be the best football team um, in the National Football League this year. Um, Coaching-wise, playing-wise, offense, defense, special teams, they've just got it all. Um, and, you know, listen, this, this is going to be short and sweet today. Um, we're going to jump in and, you know, talk a little bit and then get out. We've got the games coming up in about an hour, but as always, you know, will you guys please like, um, share, and, um, you know, go to the Seth Joyner page on YouTube and follow. I appreciate you guys. It's been absolutely phenomenal. So um, the Texans and the Ravens, it has been one hell of a year for D'Amico Ryans and, um, and C.J. Stroud and this Texans football team. But in my opinion, I get the sense that, you know, the buck stops here today. Uh, it's great for them to have done what they've done and gotten as far as they've gotten. Um, it's also fantastic, you know, that C.J. Stroud has got a taste, is going to get a taste what playoff football is really all about. Um, but at the end of the day, when you put these two teams to, uh, up against each other in the experience, Lamar Jackson has been in this position before. The Baltimore Ravens are complete from a team perspective, offensively and defensively. And you got John Harbaugh, a head coach uh, who has already won a Super Bowl. So um, I'm liking the Ravens big time in this game. 
Um, I think that the Texans will put some points on the board. They played each other back in week one. Um, I believe C.J. Stroud was sacked four or five times in that game, and they still had a chance at the end. Um, I think it, you know, even though the, the 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 Ravens win big, I still think that they'll put some points up on the board, and most of them will probably come late. Uh, I'm not a bet man, even though you guys see the Bet Parks logo right there. You know, I if, if I bet, it's in fun. It's never, you know, with my own money. I work too hard for my cash to bet it. But anyhow, um, I like the Ravens in this game, 32 to 20. Um, you got the Packers traveling all the way out to the 49ers. Um, and this is another one of those feel-good quarterback situations, you know, where – you know, you've got Jordan Love stepping in as a starter for the first time uh, this year after the exit of one Aaron Rodgers. Another story program, uh, 49ers are a story program. Um, but when you look at these two teams and you look at them rightly, um, you know, you, you, you've got to kind of lean towards the 49ers, you know, winning this game. They've been on a mission since the Eagles knocked them out of the, out of the NFC championship last year um they've been on a, on a mission and listen they've had their ups and downs they they've had their you know their moments just like anybody every other team in the national football league but they figured out how to right the ship um at the right time and um, even though <laughs> the baltimore ravens took them out to the woodshed and i believe it was week 15 and 16 um they're still a formidable football team they've got you know they paid a lot of money for that defense They've got a lot of good players on the offensive side of the football, and they're extremely well coached by a great play caller in Kyle Shanahan. Um, even though I think that Jordan Love will have a, a decent day, um, if they fall behind in this game and they're able to, to ratchet up, you know, that pass rush, I think Jordan Love will have a tough day. The only the advantage that they have is that they've got some wide receivers on this Green Bay team. This Green Bay team is going to be a problem in the future. No doubt about it. They've got some guys that can play. And this, if this Christian Watson kid can ever figure out to keep his figure out how to get his hamstrings right, um, they're really going to be something special moving forward. That being said, I still like the San Francisco 49ers to win this game 28 to 17 out in Cali. All right. Tomorrow, um, we got the Buffalo Bills traveling. Well, not the Buffalo Bills, Kansas City Chiefs traveling to the Buffalo Bills. Um, both of these teams familiar with the cold. It's going to be freezing up there. Um, Kansas City went to work last week on Miami in the freezing cold. Um, Buffalo played in the cold last week. So it's going to be a very interesting game. I think that this is going to be the most epic game of the weekend because you've got, you know, an elite quarterback, um, you know, versus an elite quarterback challenge, I should say. You got Josh Allen for the Buffalo Bills. We all know Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs, what they can do. It's going to be elite on elite, in my opinion. Um, the Kansas City Chiefs and, and Patrick Mahomes have found ways, you know, over the last couple of years to kind of put the dagger in, you know, no pun intended. You know, Stephon Diggs talked about putting the dagger in the Miami Dolphins. Um, I think it was last week, but. I get the sense that Kansas City has put the dagger in the Buffalo Bills more often than it's been the other way around. I think that this is the week, that this is the week, this is the game, this is the year where the tide actually turns for Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. You got him at, you got him at home. The first time Patrick Mahomes has ever had to play a playoff game on the road with the exception of their two wins in the Super Bowl on the road, um, if you even want to call that a road game. But they got to travel to Buffalo. They got to deal with the crowd noise. They got to deal with being in unfamiliar territory, all of these things. And I think this is the year that the Buffalo Bills break the curse. Now, I'm not predicting that they're going to go on and win the Super Bowl. That curse is much more monumental um, than the curse that um, of today, the curse of Kansas City. I think they break that today. I think Josh Allen breaks through. I think, you know, this defense – finds a way even with all the injuries that they have because kansas city listen they're back in the mix again but they've been struggling all season long it, things haven't been right with them either they got travis kelsey and um they got this this um 
you know, this Sheed kid. Now, you're not going to tell me that Buffalo can't figure out a way to take two guys away. And Buffalo's been pretty stout against the run, so they've got something, you know, for this Pacheco kid too. Now, if you can figure out how to just take one of those guys away, you know, either the 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 either Travis Kelsey or the wide receiver, um, Sheed, then all of a sudden, you know, you, you only give Patrick Mahomes one option. And now this Buffalo defense can get after. I like Buffalo in this game. Ever since the Eagles game, they've been trending upwards. They're peaking at the right time. They're doing it the right way. They're running the football and they're using Josh Allen. He's making plays where he has to. Um, for me, this is a big um this 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 is a big matchup and this is a big win for Buffalo. I got the Buffalo Bills 31, 34 to 31. And then the last game, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers travels to Detroit. Um, you go from two elites to two guys that you want to question. And people might say, how do you question Jared Goff? He led a team to the Super Bowl. Both of these questions, um, both of these teams, I should say, you know, these quarterbacks are still quarterbacks from the standpoint, in my opinion, um, that they are pressure, you know, they're pressure adverse, you know. Jared Goff, one of the reasons, in my opinion, was Sean McVay made the trade for Matthew Stafford is because he realized after losing the Super Bowl to um, to the to the New England Patriots that Jared Goff wasn't going to be able to help them win the big one. He had to give him too much advice from the sideline in his ear pre-snap and also under pressure situations that he would fold up and make mistakes that the team couldn't come back from. He hasn't been able to do that. He hasn't really done that a lot this year. There have been a few games where he hasn't played well, but there's also been some games, you know, um, where he's looked really good. Don't get me, don't get it twisted. Jared Goff, if you give him a running game and you allow him to feel comfortable in the pocket, he can make all the throws. There's no doubt about it. I'm not saying that he's some kind of slouch. What I'm saying is if you can get the run game under control, and put him in third and second and long situations. And if you have the gumption, the wherewithal, like a guy like Todd Bowles does to actually bring pressure, he doesn't have to bring it to the level that he brought it against Jalen Hurts because the Eagles are downright clueless when it comes to what you got to do to beat the Blitz. And they keep doing the same thing over and over. I can promise you, Jared Goff and this offense won't handle things that way. Their main focus is going to be win some positive yards, great positive yards on first down. Because if they can do that, that lessens Todd, Todd Bowles' ability to actually come after them in second and short and third and short situations. Now, Baker Mayfield, another one of those guys, not out of the woods, played extremely well. I mean, and just sliced and diced this Eagles defense. But then again, over the last five or six weeks, what team didn't really slice and dice this Eagles defense? Um, Baker's another guy. And, and, the, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers don't necessarily run the ball all that good. Aaron, um, Aaron Glenn is another guy who will bring some pressure when he needs to and when he thinks is warranted. So it's another one of those situations. These, these All of these games would be great chess masters. Um, the Detroit Lions are at home. Um, first um, playoff win in eons last week. City's hype. Team is hype. Fan is hype. Um, I got an eerie feeling about this one, though. And not that I'm picking, you know, the Bucks to go far. I just feel like, you know, this is a bad matchup for Detroit. It's a bad matchup because you're going to be playing against one of the better defenses in the league, one of the more aggressive coordinators in the league. And, you know, they play the run halfway decent. And if you get in a situation where Montgomery and Gibbs aren't running the ball effectively or you get behind in this game for some reason or another, and God, Goff has got to throw the ball. You know Ty Bowles. He's going to come after him in, in, in droves. And, you know, golf is just the type of guy, man, if he <laughs> – when he's under pressure, he may just turn around and hand the guy the ball, the defense the ball, just to avoid the pressure, just so you don't hit him. 
So that this, this yeah, I'm 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 going there. I'm going there today. I, I'm I'm going to take Tampa Bay in the uh, in the upset, seventeen to fourteen. Believe it or not, and um, it, it's going to be interesting. That that's going to be interesting, uh, an interesting game. Both games tomorrow. The KC Buffalo game is going to be interesting because you're going to have elite quarterbacks. The Tampa Bay Detroit game, in my opinion is going to be interesting because you got two quarterbacks that could go either way. They could either light it up or they could, you know, drop a stink bomb. And I think the pressure in this game on the two of these are going to manifest itself in a, in a way where this game is going to come down to which one of these two quarterbacks make the least amount of mistakes. All right. So I see some of you guys as questions. I know you want to um, talk about the birds. I got some notes here. We're going to talk about them for a little while before I jump off and let y'all get ready, you know, for divisional Saturday. Um, wow. Um, the report came out that last Tuesday or Wednesday that Howie and Nick Sirianni had been having conversations and calling around about, um, you know, potential coordinators to fill in. Um, I know that, you know, a lot of people think that Nick should be gone. I live in that camp more so than I believe that, you know, he should be given another year to try to get it right. And this is why I say that, you know, you got to think about, you know, how much faith, how much faith will the players that remain here have in Nick Sirianni? How much faith will the fan base have in Nick Sirianni if he stays here next year? How much faith do y'all believe, you know, how much faith do you put in the fact that Nick Sirianni had seven, 18, 17 games, 18 weeks to fix whatever it was that was wrong with his football team? He stood in the live press conference when asked, you know, Nick, what, what do you think you need to do to fix the problems and the issues, you know, with this team? And he said, don't you think if I knew I would have done it by now? See, that's a red flag for me. I don't know about you guys, but that's a red flag for me. That's him saying that I don't, I, I don't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. And my question to you is, if he didn't know what to do this year, through 17 games, 18 weeks, and a playoff game, if he didn't know what to do then, why do we have faith that he'll know what to do next year? Because the situation will be similar. The offense is going to look like it looked this year. The defense is going to be a work in progress. There's going to be a lot of players that are no longer going to be on that defensive side of the football. And you're going to have a whole nother roster to put together over there, Harry Roseman. You're going to have a whole new, um, you know, terminology for your players once again on the defensive side. How do you make the shift? And this is my opinion that they have to make the shift. You got to move away from Vic Fangio and the, you know, bend but don't break style of football. And you got to get back to the rich history of football, especially defensive football that we've known in Philadelphia for the last 30 years. Aggressive, hard nose. We're going to make you feel us. That kind of defense. That's what we need. You know, there has to be a departure from the, the psychology and the, and the philosophy of how you play defense because it certainly hasn't worked. Yeah, they won one Super Bowl, they've been to two. But I would venture to tell you that with 500 yards passing in the first one that they won, it was all on the offense to get it done. BG made a great play, forever be known in the city of Philadelphia, you know, for what he was, for what he did to, you know, seal the victory. But then, you know, you get to Super Bowl 57 and you lose that one last year because in the second half you had no remedy whatsoever for one Patrick Mahomes. And granted, there's a lot of people that don't have a remedy for him, you know, but you completely shut him down in the first half and they made an adjustment at halftime and just a complete one, you know, 360, a complete about face on you that, you know, in the second half. And you had no adjustment. 
So on defense, it's going to look like a very different football team with a lot of different things that have to overcome. New players, new personnel, a new coach, a new a new DC with probably a whole new slate of, you know, defensive coaches. My thing is also they've got to get away from, you know, they, they, they need to hire a guy who has some pedigree. And this is why, because there's no way that you're going to be able to, to, to develop the players that they, the way they need to develop them, the way that they've gone about what they've gone about. Okay. You hire a young unknown up and coming. He brings all his friends and his boys over. That's probably younger or the same age as him with coaches who have limited coaching experience positionally, positionally, that really don't have everything that's necessary to make everybody better. So how am I going to make my linebackers better if I don't, if me as a coach, I don't know what to do to help my players get better? That's why you need the experience. You got to have the experience at every player's position in order for those guys to get better. Because then the players get frustrated. Like, coach, what are you going to do? What are you doing? What can you do to help me get better? That's what players want to know. They want to know that their position coaches can give them the tools to go out on the field and be the best that they can be. So the Eagles need to shift from that. So all those things, take all of those things in into consideration, okay? And then over on the offensive side of the ball, we know how talented we are there. We're probably going to lose, you know, the great Jason Kelsey. We, we we got some guys that can fill in, but can they do it like, like J.K. did it? Probably not. There's going to be some growing pains there. You got an offense that looked very vanilla and very non-creative. What more does Nick Sirianni have in his playbook if this is his playbook? If this is if this is his offense, and this is what we saw this year, what else does he have to offer? Jalen Hurts, Dallas Goddard, AJ Brown, Devontae Smith. What more does it what more does he have to offer those players from a creative standpoint? so that they can move out, out of their state of frustration and let their talents let them be the best that they can be. So these are the questions. These are the things that I throw out to you, and I'm curious. Do you really think that it warrants Nick Sirianni staying on? I think, unfortunately for all of us, that that's exactly what's going to happen. I get the sense that if they were going to move on from Nick, that they would have done so already. They were supposed to meet on Wednesday. That got pushed to Friday because of logistics. Gave Nick time to put together a plan and touch out, reach out to, you know, potential OCs and DCs and position coaches. Um, I know that time isn't, the, isn't of the essence for the Eagles because if they decide to move on, this is what they've done, you know, the last two coaching changes. They're looking for the next greatest young and bright guy to come along they're not concerning themselves with the fact that you know there's seven eight other teams that need head coaches and you might be losing coaches every single day only thing they're concerned with is that if we decide to make a change we're going to do so with another young and upcoming guy another mistake in my opinion go get you a guy who has some some experience some creativity to his offense, a guy that's going to either be a part of the defense or the offensive side of the football, and then go get a proven guy on the offensive side, a defensive side of the football so that they can do what they do. But this is my opinion. I just feel like, you know, if they want to make a move, they would have made it already. You know, this it's purely my opinion. Contrary to what I just said about whether they care about the timing of it or not. I just feel like if it was something that they were going to do to move on, that they would have already done it by now. Um, and they seem to be dragging their feet about it. It puts the Eagles organization in a precarious position when you think about it as well, 
if they decide to bring Nick back? What's the confidence of potential free agents coming to Philadelphia after watching the collapse and seeing, you know, how vanilla the offense can be and how passive the defense can be? Um, what do what does the organization look like to the rest of the NFL? Even the coaches. With so much stuff leaking out about, you know, what the players are saying and what the what the perception of is how how he runs everything and tells the coaches what to do and how to do it and the and the analytics department. If you're a coach that really wants to coach, is the Philadelphia Eagles somewhere where you really want to coach where they're going to micromanage every little thing that you do instead of just allowing you to be a coach and do what you love to do? So these are the things um, – these are the things that worry me about the direction that the Eagles are, are headed and how hard it's going to be for them to right the ship if Nick Sirianni is the guy that you bring back. Um, we'll see. Time will tell. Um, time will tell. So let me see. Let me go through a let – me, let, me, let me do y'all a little solid here. Uh, I'm going to hit up. One or two questions before I get out of here. All right. Timo Lane wants to know technically how he did the same thing he did in 2017-22, but it didn't work. Those changes worked. These didn't. Listen, you're 100% correct. You can't keep doing the same thing over and over, um, expecting for it to always work. You're 100% correct. It's the same thing, you know, with the team last year. You know, the way that they approach – the the blitz is also similar to you know how they did it last year they got away with the big plays last year didn't work so much this year because offenses figured out um exactly what to do to take that away come with the zero blitz give Jalen one read now you guys understand for all these years why i've been talking about pressure 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 because you can understand now and see how much pressure actually changes the game when you run it the right way. The Eagles try to do it. They try to run a five-man pressure, but there's no mystery to it. There's no creativity to it. You can see it coming a mile away. But pressure is a major part of the game, of today's game, that rules and everything is set up in order for um, – is set up in order for the offenses to succeed. So the defense has to take advantage of whatever advantages they have as often as they possibly can. And a lot of that is with pressure. But when your mindset and your philosophy as an organization or defense is to always be protecting against the big play, then that's what you get is what you've seen with the Eagles in this major collapse, particularly over the last, you know, eight to seven, eight games of the season. All right. Um, which one is it? Let's go with Javier. Um, didn't decide to say in one of his first presses that he was going to bring a toughness to his defense that represented the Philadelphia, the city of Philadelphia. Absolutely. That's why I was shocked by what I saw. He said, we want to make teams come in here and feel us. Listen, as a player for Buddy Ryan, that's what we did. That's what Ray Rose did. That's what, what, what Jim Johnson did. That's the kind of defense we're used to. Even old Swamp Fox. It's crazy because I know of him, but I don't know him. And all I know him by is Swamp Fox from the old vets back when I played that was here and played under. Aggressive. Okay. Bud Carson, aggressive. And now we've moved into this era where we want to play this passive level of football that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it, unless there's a shift in the mindset for the Eagles, I fear that things are going to get worse before they get better. Because the problem is, the real problem is, um, is that 
It took the Eagles 57 years to win a Super Bowl in the modern Super Bowl era. They've gone to two Super Bowls in the last six years. They lost one and they won one. The tough part is, is that they went to two in six years. Because the Eagles brass are going to look at that and say, you know what, we did things the right way. We got the two Super Bowls in six years when they hadn't got to, they hadn't won one in 57 years. So the Eagles have won one Super Bowl in 63 years. And when they, if they honestly believe that how they got to two Super Bowls in the last six years is the right way to do it and their way of doing it, then we're in for some lean times, man, as Eagles fans. We're in for some heartbreak times. Because if they're going to continue to do things the way that they've done things, then they're going to continue to get the results that they've been getting. And we as fans are going to continue to be heartbroken by watching this team be good enough to get to the playoffs, but not good enough to move to the next level. And maybe not even get to the playoffs because you know what? Other teams are going to continue to get better. You know, if we just stay status quo, stay where we are, other teams are going to continue to get better. And the Eagles have got to figure out, you know, how to make this shift, you know, fundamentally and how they run the organization and what their thoughts on how, as far as how offensive and defensive football has to be played. Nothing wrong with big plays. I get it. You're going to make more big plays throwing the ball down, down the field than you ever could and quicker than you ever could running the football. But at the end of the day, you can't take, what a defense isn't giving you. And big plays are just like pass rush and blitzing to me. You got to earn the right to do so. The way you earn the right to rush the passer and blitz is that you take away a team's ability to run the football. You make them one-dimensional. You get a lead, and now you got them where you want. Now you can chum the waters. Same thing on offense. You run the football. You take the short passes, convert your third downs, points on the board every possession that you possibly can you get a little bit of a lead and then when you force the offense's hand to have to come after you and do some things that don't that they really don't want to do now you can look out there and see aj brown lined up on a number two corner or Devonte smith lined up in the slot versus a safety or a number three corner and take advantage of you know hitting big plays down the field or dallas goddard with a linebacker matched up man to man on him you know, hit him, hitting them on a seam route up the middle of the field. That's how you get big plays. You don't get play, big, play, big plays just by, you know, forcing the ball down the field, not when teams know that that's what you want to do. If you look at all of our blitz pickups, you got guys that are lined up at like five to 15 yards, and you've got wide receivers running to the coverage instead of running away from the coverage because everything's got to be vertical all the time. No crossing routes, no uncover routes, no option routes. Just go. Jalen's going to throw it up there, make something happen. AJ's going to come down with a 50-50 ball. That philosophy and that way of thinking has to, has to change in order for this organization, in my opinion, to move forward. And I don't believe, you know, I'm, I don't advocate for anybody to lose their job, but I laid out why I don't believe that Nick Sirianni is the guy for the job. All right. All right. I'm going to wrap right there, man. Just a quick 30 minute chat with you guys. Just wanted to know, let you guys know what I feel about the games today, what I feel about where the Eagles are. Um, probably Monday, I'm going to pre-tape a show for you guys on Tuesday. Um, I got some traveling I got to do on Tuesday. Um, so I'll break down Sunday's games. And by the time I take, um, 4.30 Eastern, West West Coast time, 7.30 East Coast time, uh, maybe we'll have a decision on whether Nick Sirianni still remains the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles or the search is on for a new one, all right? Uh, enjoy the games today. As always, take care of each other and be good to each other. But most important, make sure that you love each other, all right? I will see you guys on Tuesday, all right? Let me get my stuff together here.
All right. Peace out.